Welcome back to Jalopy Shop, everyone. Uh, so today, uh, I'm a little excited. I went and did some uh, some junkyard snooping and got some really cool stuff. I know some of you will probably be really bored by this first part of the video, um, unless you're really into rabbits like I am. So kind of wanted to show you the cool stuff we picked up. Um, got a kind of laid out here on the well, it'll probably just be easier to kind of show you everything as we go. So, right here, we got four pieces of trim from a 76 Rabbit. There was a 76 Rabbit at one of the local junkyards. And uh, I went down to look at a turbo diesel, uh, an 84 turbo diesel, which is like one of the rarest ones you can find. Uh, somebody got the stuff I wanted off of that one, but this one was in the yard, so I went and checked it out anyway. So I got four pieces of chrome trim, uh, two for the fenders, two for the doors. And I know you're saying to yourself, but Jeff, that's black on the counter, not, not chrome. Um, all these trim uh, were uh, painted over black, uh, but if you strip off the covering, uh, it's chrome underneath. So, and it's actually not chrome, it's, it's uh, polished stainless. So, but I got four really good pieces of chrome trim. Um, it's kind of put in my, in my reserve, so when I finally get to put trim on the side of this, um, we can... Uh, can pick the best and sell the rest or keep some as spares. Um, I got an original, see if you can see this here, kind of one of the original door ha or window handles. These are really hard to come by. They got the little skinny, skinny centers. Uh, kind of like a, like a, we're on a beetle because they used a lot of beetle parts for interior stuff. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, I got the early removable speaker grill out of that 76. The dash was just hammered. It looked like uh, just falling apart, cracks everywhere, but I was able to get the speaker grill out of it. Um, this one was really cool. This is something that I got kind of a, a spare of now. Um, so this is the, the heater control knob. For those of you who haven't seen an early car, usually the fan switches here. Well, on these cars, the fan is all controlled by the sliders. So you have um, like on the later cars you'll have two sliders. Well on here you have three. So one controls the vent, one controls the temperature, and one controls the fan. So, you know, lower speed, higher speed. And, since I got that, I was also able to get a set of heater controls. Now I have a couple of these that came out of some cars that were, the heater controls were falling apart, like this plastic rivet was, was coming out. Um, so all the the sliders were kind of left to their own devices to fall all over the place, but this is probably the nicest set of these sliders I've seen. Um, the car was in really good shape, aside from no floor pans. Somebody parked it in the field and let it sit there till it rotted out. Um, picked up a pair of the tail light covers. These go on the inside of the tail lights and kind of cover up the wiring and make it a little bit cleaner inside. The two things that I thought were really cool in this car the first one is this. So I know the guys that know these cars know exactly what this is. This is an original rain tray cover for the early cars. Now the later cars came with a big plastic piece that kind of had a quilted pattern in it. Well this is the early smooth one and it just clips on the edge of the, of the hood where the hood uh, closes uh, at the top of the rain tray so you still have a little bit of room in where the rain tray is, and this just goes underneath the vents and the hood to direct water away from the, the heater. The, these things are, I don't think anybody is remaking these yet. Um, they are really hard to find, and so I'm super excited about finding one. No cracks, no splits. Like, it looks like it's a couple years old. Remember when I was talking about that two-year-old plastic versus, like, 45-year-old plastic a couple uh, in, the, uh, in the last episode? Well, this is what I'm talking about. This is uh, really good condition. And I've never seen one of these. I know they are out there somewhere, but I've never seen one of these. It's actually an early rubber shift boot, and it's still pliable. Like, it's not cracked, it's not anything. It, it's in really good condition. So I don't know if this car just sat like underneath a tree with no sun getting on it, but it's still got, it's got a Volkswagen part number stamped in it. I didn't think it would. I was like, I thought maybe it was aftermarket or something. But it has a Volkswagen part number, 171-711-115. So 
at some point maybe I'll look that up and see uh, see what a cross -re if it cross references against anything. But I don't know if I'll use it. But I was like, man, that's a really cool piece. So I kind of nerded out there for a couple minutes on uh, on some junkyard car parts. Um, but uh, I didn't have knobs for the sliders for my heater controls, and now I got a good heater control. So just little things along the way that you you know you pick up to get your project back together um, and keeping kind of a mental inventory of those things that you need when you're out junkyarding or make a list on your phone of stuff you're looking for because sometimes you get out there and you you forget um, there was a couple things that I was going to pick up when I was out there from some other cars but uh, I completely forgot them I uh, got about halfway home and I was like man I should have bought that stuff <laughs> so all right so that's kind of the 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 goodie bag for today um, but uh, we're gonna get to uh, trying to make some some platforms for these seats uh, we've got our handy dandy cardboard here that we're gonna use and uh, we're gonna get to work okay for those of you that watch uh, a bunch of these shows where people like myself take on projects like this and they're trying to make things uh, some of some of us will talk about CAD design well not all of us have access to CAD but we all have access to cardboard cardboard aided design not computer but it's cardboard super easy to to work with you can cut it with a scissors instead of a grinder you can bend it, you can re-bend it, you can move your bends, you can do all the things that you need to do. And when you're done with it, you kind of flatten it out and transfer it to your sheet metal. And then you make your sheet metal, put your bends in it, and it really saves time on your metal production. Um, and like I said, cardboard is so cheap and so easy to work with that it makes it a lot easier to, to build whatever you're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to make uh, down here we're going to make some mounts that we can bolt the front of the seat to so we're going to try to do it with the seat in position we've got our level here checked it earlier but we'll check it again and you probably I don't know if you can see it bubble it put the bubble there it's it's level straight across the front of that cushion so um, we've got a good good foundation to start with now, as soon as we bump it, it's not going to be level anymore, and we'll have to recheck it. But hopefully, we won't bump it while we're trying to do this portion of the of the creation process. So we're just going to get in here. I'm going to slide. I'm going to slide you back a little bit. See if I can make this happen. I've got to move this little block of wood. Turn that out of the way. And I need to put a I need to put something underneath there. Let's make that. It's gonna need to be so we're gonna need to make that about two inches tall as a starting point. We may have to come down the thickness of the metal there. So I guess we'll start off with a little square platform that's about an inch and three quarters tall. Grab our, grab our pen here. Which doesn't work. Okay, so now we have a proper cardboard marking tool, a Sharpie. So we're going to get started on making this little cardboard stand. I'm going to see if this piece of cardboard is actually wide enough. So it's four inches wide. So got a good uh, a good start. Nice thing about cardboard is you can always cut it, piece it together, tape it together, make whatever you need to make. And now we're going to start shaping some cardboard. That base needs to be about two inches wide. I think we're going to have to make it on our larger piece of cardboard here. So 
So we'll make our mark at two inches. Oh no, you can't really, can't really see all this. So we're going to go another two inches for that. So we should get our, our center here. And then I guess our legs. And then we'll figure out about how deep we want it to be. And if we make it make it about four inches deep, that should give us plenty of distance. So now just use a straight edge here to kind of get get us in the ballpark. It might even leave us a little extra. Because you can always you can always cut a little bit off if you want. Okay, so there we have a very rough template. Doesn't include the little end pieces that we're going to be weld over there, but you can always cut those out, tape them on, and then kind of unfold the. So we're going to build a little. We're going to build a little box out of cardboard. And then we'll. cut it down and make it work. So I'm just going to kind of bend that over the edge of the level there so I got a nice sharp straight edge to bend on. Just kind of taking that edge of that level, bending that cardboard, putting a nice, putting a nice bend in it there. So now, I'm not exactly not exactly level, we're not exactly straight. Got just under two inches there, just a little over two inches there. But now, I'm going to go down here and slide it in underneath our seat and see, see how it works. So it looks like, since the floor pan slopes up that way, I'll turn it around. trying to do this so you guys can see what's going on here too and I can see it okay let's refocus the light here a little bit See if that helps. And then I need to find out. Okay, so we are going to have to trim it up a little bit to get it to slide down further. Working with cardboard is so nice. I guess I could just make the whole car out of cardboard. So we're trying to get this back underneath here, right underneath where that seat is going to sit. And that looks pretty good. Let's see if we can get a better a better view here I 
looks like it needs a little more light. So you can see what we did there is we just bent up the cardboard, kind of slid it underneath that mounting spot. So that looks like if we close off the ends of that with some sheet metal and maybe shrink it down just a little bit more to fit in there, we could actually weld it right to the side of the transmission tunnel. Correction, exhaust tunnel. And uh, we'd have a nice platform to bolt that seat to. So, I really doubt that the other side I don't have my high levels of confidence that this side will go quite that easy. That was, not going to lie, that even impressed me a little bit, like how, how easy that went. So, this one over here, because of where the floor comes up here, I don't know if you, if you can see it. floor right here kind of has a raised portion to it so that makes that just a that's going to have to be shorter so we stick our tape measure down here look at this one it only needs to be about an inch tall so Take uh, part of doing this is not losing track of what you're working on. So I think we're going to stick with the same four inch depth, but now we're just going to make it one inch tall instead of four. And we still need to have two inches in the center. still want to have that platform be about two inches wide. Kind of roughly cut up another one real quick. I'm just going to clean up that corner. Clean up those edges a little bit. So here we've got our little a little platform that we're going to start out with and of course we would still want to put something over the ends of that to box it in so we could weld it all the way around but we're just kind of figuring out where everything needs to be right now so I need to cut one of these ends down just a little bit more so that it slides right underneath there Just take it slow and make little cuts as you go, you know, a little bit at a time. You can get there, it just takes a while. If we can get that just to go 
go back a little bit further, I think we're right up against our old, where our old cross member used to sit. So I'll see if I can stick you guys in there real quick so you can get a look. So, so there we go. We're that is kind of right about where we need to be as far as making a little making a little platform. Now the outside here it could drop down a little bit further. So I'll probably make a note of that when I uh, and then cut a piece to fit in there. Make it fit in there nice and tight. But that, and of course, then we can grab our level. I don't think we disturbed the seat at all. No, nope, we are still still level to the point where if we needed to shim it a little bit one way or another, we could just weld a, a washer on top of the. Uh, on top of the little platform once we get it built. So that's uh, that's building the front, the little front ones out of cardboard. Now we're going to work on the back ones, which are going to be a little more difficult to get to because I don't know. I'm pretty sure I can't fold this seat forward since it's a four-door seat and there's no there's no latches to fold it forward. So we're all set up on this side now. So you guys are actually behind the seat um, looking towards the driver's side. Right about here is where that mounting hole is gonna be. That'd be a lot easier to get to it once we have the seat mounted and we can slide it back and forth. So we're gonna do kind of the same thing we've been doing. Um, on this one, I'd like to see it supported all the way to the back of the track. So we'll probably make this one about five inches deep, just to give us that little extra bit of support. And we're still gonna go with our same two inch wide platform. And we already measured from the base to the floor, and it's about two inches. So I'm just gonna make our marks. I go six inches wide total. Gonna take our level, use it as our straight edge. Get that reasonably straight between the two points there. Make this work here. So as you can see, it's not terribly difficult work, but if you're expecting to be paid for your time, it'll never happen. This is, you know, definitely something you do because you enjoy it and you want to save money because you're not going to pay a shop to do it. It's really hard to find a shop to pay to do custom work like this. It's, uh, you know, reasonably from a shop you know it's like well i'm gonna pay the bill it doesn't matter well they probably make more money you know like a like a body shop doing warranty work than they in insurance work than they do this kind of stuff so and you can pick up a skill you can apply it to other things you know you can you know use this for building stuff around the house or making stuff to fit into your garage or you know, obviously car projects are, it's really handy to have this kind of skill set. So we've got our, we've got our piece cut out. Now we're just going to make our nice straight bends here. Just get that, kind of fold it over there, make it nice and, nice and straight. Okay, so now this is our little 
two inch platform that we built just like the other ones. Now this is going to get really tricky to get in here and see. It's probably almost easier to look from the little viewfinder I have here than it is to actually see what, <laughs> see what I'm doing because I can't really see from that side of the car right now. But we're going to kind of do the same thing. We're just going to make little cuts as we go until we get it to slide underneath the chair. You know, without disturbing it, we're going to just going to make this a little bit at a time. So we should go. In case you're wondering what I used for the, the cardboard, I just used a shoe box. You can use a cereal box, you can use whatever you want to use. Just underneath there but there's a little so these seats have a little locator tab that drops that the seat will actually drop into so we need to make sure that we get, we get this fairly close If you can see what we got going on here. So I'll flip you guys around up here. So this is this is what it looks like from my perspective. So it, pretty close, but you can see it can only go it can only go so far forward because of that tab. And it looks like in the back that seat rail kind of comes up a little bit. So, need to add a little bit of depth there, <clears throat> but I don't want to cut it. So, how do we get it further? How do we get it further forward so that we can? Uh, make that work. Well, we have a. I have an idea. And that involves, we're going to put that right where we want it. And we're just going to put a dot there, right kind of in the center. And we're just going to make a cutout for that little peg. I'm just going to just going to cut this down, fold, I'm just going to bend that down like that. So now, look at that, slid it right up to where we wanted it to go, and there you have it. So now, if we're looking at this, see if I can get it to where you guys can see it. We've got a nice big open space right here between the um, between where the seat the newer seat rail and the old seat rail is. So what we can do is we can come back you know the nice thing about metal is it's always like you know you can always make it you can add to it you can take it away so what I'm going to do is I am going to get this box welded into place after we make it out of sheet metal and then I will come through and I will make a piece that carries this rail all the way back and then we can flush it all the way across make a nice nice factory looking type platform there 
for this seat to mount to. So I'm going to finish making one for this other side. Way over here. And this one's going to be really tricky to get to as well. But once we're done with that, once we've got those built, we're going to... Uh, so as you can see, it's a lengthy process. We've got uh, two episodes just devoted to cutting things out and making little pieces of cardboard so that we know how we want to make it out of sheet metal. So take your time, do it right, um, and uh, you know, next time we come back, uh, episode three, we're going to be uh, bending some stuff out of sheet metal. We're going to get the welder out, we're going to tack these things into place, we'll have the seat in and out of the car a few more times, and uh, we're going to get these things, uh, we'll, we'll at least get the passenger one uh, fabricated up and mounted in the car where we want it. Uh, then we get to duplicate that on the driver's side. So all told, we'll probably have seven or eight hours of work, uh, not counting the time that we take to... Um, get out of the shop and do the all the video editing and stuff like that 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 I do uh, myself on these videos so you can see it's a lengthy process to get this not only to do this but to get the information out to you guys so you can see how it's done or at least how I'm doing it and uh, if you see my car to show you don't have to pull the carpet up to look underneath it you can just watch the video and see hey this is how I did it so until next time thanks for watching Jalopy Shop get out there and